Hello again, I'm Karina Fugit, Dietitian and Certified Diabetes Educator, and this is video 2 of 5 on an overview of the diabetic diet. In our last video, we discussed carbohydrate counting and label reading, and in this video, we're going to mainly focus on serving sizes, or in other words, how much of each food can you eat for it to count as one carbohydrate choice, or 15 grams of carbohydrate. So starting off with bread, usually one ounce of bread is a carb choice. Full wheat bread is better than white bread because it has more fiber and will digest more slowly. Be sure to keep your rolls and muffins small and remember that a six inch tortilla is the smallest you can find at the grocery store. You can find 45 calorie per slice bread which will allow you to eat two slices for one carb choice. Next we have cereal. For a regular unsweetened cereal like Cheerios and Corn Flakes, you get 3 fourths of a cup, but the gold standard breakfast cereal for someone with diabetes is oatmeal and not the instant kind that comes from a packet since that has a lot of added sodium and sugar. One half cup of cooked cereal is a carb choice. A high fiber cereal is an excellent choice for breakfast for someone with diabetes. Pastas and grains are something to be careful with since you only get about a third of a cup cooked for one portion size. Even if it's brown rice or whole wheat pasta, the carbs are the same. So if you eat a cup of cooked pasta, you're actually eating three carb choices. For crackers and snacks, I'd like to point out that you can eat about three cups of popped popcorn for one carb choice, which is pretty good for a snack. Overall, snack foods shouldn't be a major part of your diet since your body needs vitamins and minerals available in foods you generally consume at a meal. They can also have a lot of added salt, so watch that if you have high blood pressure or kidney problems. Remember that most vegetables are actually not considered carbohydrate choices, however a few of them are, such as corn, peas, and potatoes, all of which you can have a half a cup for a serving. Baked beans are also listed for a third of a cup. Winter squash, such as acorn and butternut squash, are one cup for a serving. Sweet potatoes are slightly better for blood sugars than white potatoes, but be sure not to add a lot of butter and brown sugar to it. Beans are an excellent carbohydrate choice because they have a lot of fiber and a lot of protein, which are both good for people with diabetes. Now because of their fiber and protein content, they will be very filling and will digest fairly slowly, making your blood sugar not spike right after you eat a meal with beans. Starchy foods prepared with fat include a variety of foods that have added fats or are fried. Make sure that if you eat these foods that you cut back on other fats such as butter, mayonnaise, and salad dressing. Now fruit is a subject of much controversy in the world of diabetes. Nearly everyone seems to have certain fruits that really spike up their blood sugars. Often these include bananas, grapes, and watermelon. You can eat canned fruit, just get them packed in their own juice or water, or in light syrup instead of heavy syrup. Some of your better fruits to eat are berries, strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries. But more importantly is to remember to get a variety of fruits in your diet since they all contain different nutrients that your body needs. We suggest you eat two to three servings of fruit per day for a healthy diet. For the typical person with diabetes, fruit juice is not a wise choice. Eat the whole fruit instead. One third to one half a cup is a typical serving for fruit juice. Milk is another carbohydrate choice. And you get one cup of milk for a carb choice, whether it's skim, 1%, 2%, or whole. Of course, skim and 1% are recommended as they are lower in fat and calories. Six ounces of light or fat-free slash no added sugar yogurt is also a carb choice. Greek yogurt is quite popular because it has twice the protein as regular yogurt with the same amount of carbohydrates. It is recommended that you consume two to four servings of dairy every day for healthy bones. This brings us to our other carbohydrate choices section. A few things to point out. A two inch cube piece of cake is one carb choice, but as soon as you add frosting, it takes it up to two carb choices. One half a cup of ice cream is a carb choice, but this varies a lot with the premium ice creams out there, so always check the food label. 
Combination foods include casserole, lasagna, spaghetti with meatballs, chili with beans, and macaroni and cheese. Or other mixed foods that have some carbs mixed with some proteins. Typically, one cup or about the size of your fist is about two carb choices, but this can greatly vary depending on the food. Fast foods also vary greatly depending on how it's made and where it's made. Fortunately, now chains like McDonald's and Taco Bell have their nutrition information online and often are even available upon request at the restaurant. There are also many apps on your smartphone that can tell you the nutrition information and carbs in various fast food restaurants. Then there are our free foods, and in order for it to be free, it has to have less than 20 calories or 5 grams of carbohydrate for a serving. Free foods include sugar-free jello, diet sodas and sugar-free beverages, seasonings and herbs, broth, lemon and lime juice, and vinegar. Many sauces have carbs, so check the label and use only small amounts if the carbs are high. Here is a list of non-starchy vegetables, which are not considered carbohydrates. And again, it's mostly vegetables except for corn, peas, and potatoes. These are free as long as you eat less than three cups raw or one and a half cups cooked at one sitting. If you eat more than that at one time, then you need to count it as one carb choice. This concludes our segment on serving sizes. For a complete list of serving sizes for carbohydrate foods, please visit my website, missiondietitian.com, which you can find in the link below. For our next segment, we'll discuss an alternative to carb counting, which is called the plate method. We'll see you then. Thanks.